Well, hey everyone, welcome back to another video. This video is part one of a series of working through the building magic room on Hack Smarter. If you didn't see the announcement, we now have our own lab platform. You can follow along. It only costs you as of right now, $9 a month. $9 a month will unlock this lab and all of the future labs on the platform. The focus of Hacks Murder Labs is realism. No silly CTF environments, but things that you will actually encounter in the real world as a pen tester. Now, the Building Magic Machine is really good prep if you're studying for the OSCP or the CPTS. I rated it as medium on the platform, at least at the time of this recording, but I would say it's between kind of an easy and a medium when it comes to an active directory machine. It's incredibly well done, and what we are going to do is treat it like an actual penetration test. I'll share with you some of the details I look into when I'm doing a pen test and some of the realistic components of this machine. I encourage you, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, boot up the machine, and follow right alongside of me. You learn by watching me, but you learn even more by hands on keyboard and hacking right alongside of me. All that being said, let's go ahead and dive into this machine. So here we are at AD Challenge Lab Building Magic. Step number one is we're gonna go ahead and power on this machine. It'll take about two to three minutes to power on. One kind of gotcha for now is you wanna wait for the machine to power on and then download your VPN. So we'll give it two minutes, we'll review the scope, and then we'll download our VPN. Actually, you can see it's already running now. That took like 10 seconds. Anyways, a big shout out to Noah and Haik, or Haik if I'm saying that correct. They are the authors of this machine. And by the way, I am taking contributions. So if you wanna create a machine for the platform, I will compensate you either via cash or a free sub to the platform. Send me your machine idea to tyler at kairos-sec.com. So I'll type it in chat so it pulls up on the screen, but send your idea to tyler at kairos-sec.com. I'll let you know if it's a good one and then you can create the machine, send it to me and we can host it on the platform. And unlike some other platforms, you won't have to wait a year plus, it will be on here within a few weeks as we add machine after machine to the platform. Also, every time a machine releases, streaming and write-up is not only allowed, but it's strongly encouraged. There is no embargo. You don't have to wait a certain amount of time. Immediately, you can begin streaming, making walkthroughs, making write-ups, and collaborating with people over on the Hack Smarter Discord. Oh, it's pronounced like hike. Got it. Here's the connection instructions, but that's what I'm walking you through right now. So I'll show you how to do all of that. And you do have 20 hours worth of lab time. So it is technically counting down, but that's significantly more lab time than you're going to need. I can almost guarantee you've never spent 20 hours of lab time on any single machine like this. So that's more than you need, but that's how we keep it incredibly cheap at only $9 a month right now. And technically, if you want more lab time, you can pay $2 and get 10 more hours. So it's incredibly affordable if you want to add more lab time. But let's dive into the scope and the objective. And actually, what I'm going to do is add some of this to my notes right here. I'm just going to copy, maybe, maybe. Well, that's in its own little code block. So I might have issues copying that. We'll copy this for now and add it over to our notes and then we'll review it together. A big part of doing a penetration test is you do want to spend quite a bit of time looking over the scope. What separates a penetration tester from someone who ends up in prison is penetration testers pay attention to scope. We know what we're supposed to attack and what we're not supposed to attack. So I'm going to do an H1. And we'll just call this scope and objectives. And I'm going to paste this in. So as a penetration tester on the Hacks Murder Red Team, which by, by the way, congratulations, you are on the Hacks Murder Red Team. I don't know why it's doing this weird uh, spacing, but I'll just leave it. Your objective is to achieve a full compromise of the active directory environment. Now, like many engagements, you have team members. So another team member during prior enumeration phrase, they found a leaked database. And this leaked database contains user credentials, usernames and hash passwords. Now this is actually really realistic. A thing that I do on almost every single network engagement, both external and internal network, is I use a website called Dehashed. 
On dhash, what I'm able to do is if I'm targeting, for example, hacksmarter.org, I can type in hacksmarter.org's domain, I actually have a Python script that does this, and it will pull down to me any time that someone from that organization was in a data breach. I generally cannot get their clear text password, but I can usually get their username and their hashed password. So very realistic that we're beginning this lab with some usernames and hash passwords, very similar to how I begin many of my engagements in the real world. Let me go ahead and close that out. So execution, your task is to leverage the compromised credentials to escalate privileges, move laterally through the active directory, and ultimately achieve a complete compromise of the domain. Now you do want to add a few files to your Etsy host file on Linux. I'll explain what that is in just a moment, but that's what this is telling you. Buildingmagic.local and dc01.buildingmagic.local. I'm not sure, Mario, Marlo. I'd have to double check. All right, let's jump over to this. We can see our leaked database file right here. So I'm just going to copy this so we can add it to our notes. I'll just do a code block. I use, geez, I'm hitting my microphone. I use Notion for taking notes and I use just the free version of Notion. So everything you're seeing me do here, you can do for free, make a free Notion account. This is not sponsored by Notion. If Notion wants to give me a free premium sub though, guys, I promote you all the time for free Notion. You should, you should give me a free one, but I do just have a free Notion account and that's where I take all of my notes and I'm going to paste this in. And right away we can see that we have an ID for each user. Oh, the ID is actually right there. A username, so for this person is R Whittleton, a full name, Ron Whittleton, their role, which looks like an intern builder, and then finally their password, but it's a hashed password. Let's go back over to our machine because before we can actually hit this IP, we need to download the VPN configuration. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click download VPN config and it will download it right there. I'm gonna go to my terminal here change the directory to downloads and do sudo open VPN AD challenge lab and hit enter type in your sudo password. And you are now on the VPN. If you're on Cali, you should see your IP pop up there. I'm going to rename this to VPN, open up a new terminal, call it terminal. And I'm going to make a directory for hack smarter CD into the hack smart directory. And we'll make a directory for building magic and CD into building magic. Finally, I'll zoom in a little bit better. And now we can go ahead and grab our IP by clicking it. And let's just make sure we can at least ping our IP. And you can see we got a response right there. So we are connected to the network and we're able to ping our target machine. Now, before we dive into all of our enumeration stuff, you can see we need to add some files to Etsy hosts. If you don't know what Etsy host is, Etsy host is how a Linux machine resolves an IP to a domain name. I like to think of it like the phone book on your phone. If I'm calling PowerShell nerd, cause I see him over in chat, I don't actually have his phone number, but if I did, I wouldn't have to remember his phone number. I would just type PowerShell nerd into my phone and my phone would resolve his name to his phone number. Well, that's sort of what Etsy host does for a domain name and an IP. So let's go ahead and do that together. We'll do sudo nano Etsy host. Type in your pseudo password. I'm going to go down here, paste in the IP, hit the tab key, and we want to do buildingmagic.local as well as dc01.buildingmagic.local. I think those are the right ones. Buildingmagic.local and dc01. We can make sure we can ping it. So we'll do ping buildingmagic.local, and we are able to ping the machine from there. But now we have this. And if we look over at the machine, I apologize. I can't show this to you. One thing I want to implement is the ability to reset a machine even after you complete it. So then you can make live streams with it without showing the flags. But if I scroll down, you will see the user flag. I of course did this machine because I'm the one who tested the machine once we added it to the platform. But on the user flag, there's a hint there. And the hint says use crackstation.net for cracking the hash. So I wanted to just speed it up for you a little bit, not waste a bunch of time on hash cracking, but that's a really good hint for you in the beginning, use crackstation.net to crack these hashes. So if we go ahead and head over to that, we'll go to crackstation.net. We're doing AD Shimbitter actually on the Hack Smarter platform. If you wanna join, it's labs.hacksmarter.org. 
but this is our platform. We're not doing try hack me. We're not doing hack the box. We are doing hack smarter. Anyways, we can enter up to 20 non-salted hashes, one per line, but you can see the format here isn't great. We just want the hashes. This is where I think an LLM model like Gemini or ChatGPT is helpful. You can of course do some Linux bash CLI stuff, but I always forget the syntax for that. So we'll see if Gemini is able to help this. Can you turn this into a table? We'll just try that because then we can easily copy and paste it. And there we go. We have a table, although we could export to sheets. Just give me the passwords only. We'll see if he does it correctly. Can I copy it? I can. So I'm going to copy all of these hashes and paste them into here. I don't know why it added this space between them. I'm just going to manually remove that space. We can also copy this so it's in our notes. And I'll just make a separate one right here and drop the hash as well. That did not work. Oh, well, we'll do I'm not a robot freaking a that's a bus. That's a bicycle. I think I don't know if you guys think it's a bicycle. I hate these guys. I, I swear that I'm a robot without even knowing it because I can't pass those half the time. All right, when we go to crack the hashes, you can see two hashes cracked. We have little Ron Ron and shadow hex seven. Let me go ahead and open up flame shot. That's what I like to use for taking screenshots. And let's grab a screenshot of this and we'll just highlight the cracked hashes. Well, I guess we don't need to. They're already highlighted green. Whoops. Control C and drop it over here. And I'm gonna make a new H1 and we'll just say enumeration. Tyler confirmed a robot. Yes, definitely confirmed a robot. Little Ron Ron. I mean, little Ron Ron is the same, uh, the same password I use for my bank account. So I don't think it's that weird. But if we look at this, we have the C4A hash for little Ron Ron. And if we scroll up, that's that first hash right here. So that's likely credentials for R Whittleton. I'm just going to copy that and dropping his information there. So we have R Whittleton and his password is little Ron Ron, potentially, we still have to test it. And the other one is the BFA. So the second to the last one, and it looks like that is T Ren. So I'm gonna copy T Ren, drop it here and his password, potentially we still have to test it, is shadow hex seven. Now, you may have noticed, for those of you watching the video after the fact, there is occasionally chat above my head, unless it's still broken from Restream. But people are watching this live. I live stream all the time. You should subscribe on YouTube and hit the little bell notification so that you're notified the next time I go live. But for those of you watching on the live stream, if you have any questions as we're working our way through this, feel free to ask them. No question is a dumb question. I wanna do my best to explain this in such a way that a beginner would be able to follow along and be able to work their way through the lab. But so far we have this list of hash passwords that were from a database breach. We were able to get the clear text from crackstation.net and we know we have two, potential users in the Active Directory environment. But if we have two sets of credentials, the first thing we want to do is say, hey, are these credentials actually valid? If not, maybe we can do some password spraying. Maybe we can do some username enumeration, but let's keep it simple. Let's see if one or both of these credentials are valid in the Active Directory environment. The way we can do that is with a tool called NetExec. I'm gonna open up my terminal here, and in Kali, we'll do NXC for NetExec. You can actually see it from a previous lab that I was doing. We're gonna do SMB, but for this lab, of course, it's building magic.local, and we're gonna do our user of rwhittleton. So it'd be r.whittleton, if I'm spelling that correct. And then we want this password of little Ron Ron. And we can just see like shares. Does he have access to any shares on the SMB? an SMB share and also tell us whether or not we're able to authenticate with his credentials. But enter on our keyboard, cross our fingers, and it says status log on failure. I wonder, oh, and I freaking, typing's important guys. It's really hard for me, but his password's not Lily Ron Ron, but little Ron Ron. Let me see if I can fix that real quick.
And you can see that does work for this user. He doesn't have access to anything interesting. He just has access to the standard IPC share. There is a file share here, but he doesn't have read or write access and nothing else. Nevertheless, we just confirmed that we have access as our Whittleton. So I'm gonna do an H2 and we'll say compromising our uh, Whittleton and we'll just drop a link in there. Let's do the same thing for tren to see if we have compromised two users. I'm just gonna change this to t.ren and his password was something hex, I think. Shadow hex seven, like so. And we'll see if we're only gonna get this. Yeah, only $9 guys, hop on. Um, I made the subscription as cheap as I possibly can. Like I'm, I'm essentially breaking even when you add up infrastructure and hosting fees. I wanted to make it as affordable and as accessible to everyone. So yes, please get a sub and follow along. We'll hit enter in. And on this one, we get status log on failure. Let's make sure I don't have a typo though. T run is correct, shadow hex seven is correct. And this is actually quite real world. When you use something like dehashed, the service I showed you earlier, most of the hashes you find are not going to be valid. Now we could try something like, maybe instead of shadow hex seven, the user added an exclamation mark at the end of their password when they had to update their password, that's always a possibility, but we get status login failure, which is very real world. When you have a large set of hashes, you might get lucky and have one or two work, but the vast majority are not going to work even if you're able to crack the password because it could be a password breach from years ago. So tren does not work, but our other user does work. So I'll just make a note creds not valid. And for our Whittleton, creds are valid like that. So we have a note, but we do have an initial foothold now into the Active Directory environment as the R Whittleton user. Once again, everything up to this point, very real world things that I see often on real internal pen testing engagements. The step after this is performing enumeration of the Active Directory environment. There's a few different ways you can do this, but one of the best tools is using Bloodhound. Now, if you've never used Bloodhound before, I'll give you a very quick overview of Bloodhound. But if you just type in Bloodhound into Google, it's going to come up with a freaking dog because I'm stupid. But if you type in Bloodhound <laughs> Active Directory, you can see that this is a tool by SpectreOps, which is actually where my friend Blazebits works. I didn't even realize that but you have Bloodhound Enterprise and Bloodhound Community Edition. We're gonna use Bloodhound Community Edition in order to begin enumerating the Active Directory environment. But this is where this video is going to pause because I want you to try this on your own. I have multiple videos on my YouTube channel showing how to spin up Bloodhound, how to use Bloodhound, and how to use Bloodhound to enumerate an Active Directory environment and to come up with potential attack paths. In this first video, I just wanted to show you how to get initial access and give you some ideas for next steps to try. But what I can tell you is the next step is you want to run Bloodhound and begin enumerating the Bloodhound environment and figuring out, hey, what is another attack path I might be able to take to go deeper into the Active Directory environment? So that's my challenge for you. Try it on your own first. If you get stuck, that is okay. Join me in the next video and we'll work through the next part together. But this is how you get initial access to the building magic machine in Hack Smarter Labs. Go ahead and give it a shot. If you do get stuck, our Hack Smarter Discord is incredibly active. We have a channel dedicated to this. A lot of people would be willing to help you. Otherwise, just stay tuned for my next video and we'll continue working through this lab together. But hey, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.